Many people who became famous around the turn of the 20th century are still commonly known today. People like, say, Charlie Chaplin or Marie Curie or Henry Ford or the Wright brothers. But many more people who were very famous in their time have seen their fame fade and now remembered only, say, by family members or local historical societies. And recently a couple of viewers reached out to us about one such person, saying that they knew of an interesting character who happened to be their great-grandmother. This is someone who, in 1914, the Arizona Prescott Journal Minor described as one of the most famous women in the United States. One about whom more has been written in this country and in foreign countries than any other woman now living, who is engaged in industrial pursuits to the benefit of the country and mankind in general. And yet there's a good chance you've never heard the name of this once one of the most famous women in America, Ada Floretta Howey. It is history that deserves to be remembered. 160 years ago, Wisconsin was not America's dairy land like you might think of it today. In fact, it was a contender for the largest producer of wheat. Ada Howey was born Ada Johnson in 1852, the daughter of a Wisconsin farmer. At the time, cows were often kept as farm staples, but they were not predominantly raised for income. Wisconsin was actually the breadbasket of the U.S., with one-sixth of all the wheat being grown there. Wheat is an inexpensive, relatively easy crop to grow, allowing two harvests per year, all qualities that benefited the immigrants who moved west from New York, needing a source of steady income. At first, wheat was a boon, providing a necessary staple. However, continual wheat farming depletes the nitrogen in the soil, and so the Wisconsin yield and quality suffered after decades of repeated crops. Wisconsin farmers began to look for alternative crops, namely feed crops, which began the now famous dairy industry. As early as 1849, the journal Wisconsin Farmer and Northwest Cultivator wrote, We are confident that very many of our farmers would find it much to their advantage to turn their attention to dairying and let alone the growing of so much wheat. Yet this shift didn't occur readily because the state was still sparsely populated and land was cheap and that made it hard to displace growing wheat. Convincing farmers to raise cows for what was then a non-existent dairy industry was difficult, but with cooperation and marketing from the Wisconsin Dairymen's Association, farmers had the resources to create a successful new enterprise. The University of Wisconsin conducted research for the dairy industry, creating new tests for bacteria, promoting the use of round silos for storing feed, and trying out new farming methods on a test farm. A professor at the university created the first test for butterfat, allowing consistency in high-quality dairy products. Immigrants from New York had an advantage, as New York was the dairy capital in the mid-19th century. They brought cheese-making skills, which were used even more than butter-making, as cheese keeps longer without refrigeration. And so in the mid-19th century, Johnson grew up on 120 acres of Wisconsin dairy land known as Sunny Peak Farm, and recalled that she spent many happy hours with her sister on the property. It supported about 80 head of cattle, and she fell in love with the cows. But her father died when she was nine, and the family moved to Grand Rapids, leaving the acreage to tenant farmers. In 1869, Johnson married David Howey, who was a coal merchant and successful businessman, 11 years her senior, living in Milwaukee. In Milwaukee, she enjoyed the life of a socialite, raising her children, and they did so well that eventually they moved into a beautiful Queen Anne-style home on West Wells Street that today has been restored and is a bed and breakfast, and is on the National Register of Historic Places. She enjoyed writing and published a collection of children's stories in 1890. In 1872, Ada Howey and her sister Elzina inherited the family farm in Sunnybrook, but rented it out until Howey's oldest son, David Howey Jr., became interested in dairy farming. He took agricultural college courses offered by the University of Wisconsin in Madison. Howey herself began researching different cattle breeds and decided upon Jersey cattle as her preference. Jerseys are a smaller breed with high milk production and adapt well to many environments. Today they are typically fawn colored with a light band around a dark nose. They often have a dark switch on their tail and black hooves. And so having decided in 1897 to leave Milwaukee, Howie moved back to her childhood home to launch her dairy career with her son's help in managing the farm. According to Howie, 20 years of tenant farming had taken its toll on the property, but Howie decided not to spend the family's money expanding the farm, but to grow only with the profits the farm generated. Determined not to have a hobby farm like other well-off landowners, she began making butter from the milk of one of the two original cows on the farm. For the first few years, in her own words, she sold butter for a fancy price to private customers. She was able to purchase two purebred Jersey cows and a heifer with these profits. Being the proud owner of these purebred Jerseys, she determined to keep a sanitary barn, 
It was whitewashed. The floors were scrubbed once a week with soap suds and boiling water. The windows cleaned and curtains added to keep out the flies. While today rules govern the sanitary production of milk, at the time her innovations were considered such an oddity that through various publications she began to earn worldwide acclaim for her herd. Howie believed in common sense farming, which required those milking the cows to wash their hands. The cows were kept in stalls instead of tied up so that they could stand or lie down. They were bathed, petted, and kept comfortable. Howie played soothing music for them during milking, a practice that was likely ridiculed at first, especially through the publication of a photo in which she is seen serenading several cows with a mandolin. But she knew that thunderstorms can scare cows and negatively affect milk production, and therefore presumed that calming a cow with soothing sounds might improve production. Howie's hypothesis was proven in 2001, when a study by psychologists at the University of Leicester showed that calming music increases milk production in cows by up to 3%. An April 1919 edition of the Charlotte News quoted Ada, Your cow is your partner in business. She is working for you, earning you money, and she deserves no knocks, no cold and uncomfortable barn. Give her good treatment always. That is one of the first secrets of successful dairying. Howie's pampered cows definitely proved that nature and nurture affect a herd's production with their superior output. In 1902, a typical cow would produce about three pounds of butter per week. Howie's independently tested specimens could produce up to five times more. She began earning ribbons at state, national, and worldwide shows and gave up on churning butter to sell the cream to one of the largest hotels in Milwaukee and then to a Milwaukee ice cream company at 10 cents above market value. When Ada traveled to Europe in 1906 to give a speech in Paris, the British King Edward VII gave her a special permit to visit his dairy barns. When a Japanese delegation came to the United States in 1908 seeking cattle to improve Japanese stocks, they selected 14 cattle from Howie's herd. Mr. Howie passed away in 1911, but Ada continued farming with the help of her son. As word spread, she was asked to set up barns for other dairy farmers, the first being for the president of the Erie Railroad. Howie insisted that there was nothing special about her farm and that she was no better than her neighbors. She said that people often traveled to visit Sunny Peak and were disappointed with her plain, everyday farm. Howie, however, derived much satisfaction from her comfortable farm. She attained her knowledge out in the fields with her cows or sowing crops. Utilizing science, she composted the manure from her herd to enrich the fields where she rotated feed crops. The Los Angeles Evening Post record quoted her in 1908. How do I raise such excellent animals? Why, by much the same process of love and care that a mother raises a healthy, robust boy. And for every bit of love and care that I gave them, they repaid me a hundredfold. I get the richest cream, the purest and best butter. Every calf is a perfect specimen. Every animal I have, I count a little gold mine. And I have found the pursuit easy, healthy, interesting, and profitable. She grew her herd by selecting and breeding from her original Jersey stock. These homegrown cows often beat the more expensive imported jerseys. A September 1915 edition of the Pittsburgh Press wrote, Lace curtains in their windows, cut flowers in their stalls, and golden monograms on the milking pails all add materially to the efficiency of the herd, contends the woman who has won more than 100 medals and high prizes for thoroughbred cattle. The newspaper goes on. She has carried away so many prizes that she can't remember the number without consulting her memorandum book. Howie wrote several books on breeding, was a member of the American Jersey Club, and on the board of directors for the Wisconsin Jersey Breeders Association as early as 1903, less than 10 years into her farming career. At the start of the 20th century, Howie began speaking on the road as an expert. Originally, the University of Wisconsin College of Agriculture asked her to speak at farmers' institutes about dairy farming and breeding, poultry farming, housekeeping, typically alongside male counterparts. She was said to choose remote locations for speaking where the information she could share was most desperately needed. Perhaps she started out as an oddity, but she was also asked to speak for farmers' institutes in South Dakota, North Dakota, and New York. Her talks commanded the audience, with it being reported that many an audience has been satisfied by her earnestness of expression and convincing arguments that she is thoroughly experienced and practical dairy woman. She is a forcible speaker and withal has a personality, a magnetism that commands her listeners' attention and leaves no doubt in their minds that she knows of what she is talking. She gave more than 1,500 lectures in 38 states, Canada, and Europe, often being billed as the greatest dairy woman in the world. 
1912, she was the first woman to be appointed a member of the Wisconsin State Board of Agriculture. A May 1912 article in the Wisconsin Rapids Daily Tribune said of her comments at her first board meeting, Mrs. Howie's remarks were well received by the male members of the board, a number of them expressing the opinion that had a woman been on the board ere this, it would have worked to its advantage. In 1915, she was chosen to head the International Daring Women's Association exhibit at the Panama Pacific International Exposition, a World's Fair held in San Francisco, where she demonstrated butter and cream making. And in 1916, she was the first woman to be recognized by the Wisconsin College of Agriculture for her unselfish service to farm and home. At its largest, her herd grew to over 100 head and was considered the finest purebred Jersey herd in the United States. In 1916, she gifted many calves to farmers to improve stock and then sold at auction the remainder of her prize-winning, homebred, well-loved herd. Since her pioneering work, her general principles of love and care have become confirmed through research as the relationship between animal stress and fear of humans and animal productivity has become better understood. Although Ada gave up farming in 1916, Sunny Peak remained in the family until 1954 when it was sold to a developer and then subsequently purchased by the Highway Administration. Today, according to Wisconsin's Department of Agriculture, Trade and Consumer Protection, Wisconsin's dairy industry generates $43.3 billion annually with over a million dairy cows living in the state. Those cows produce an amazing 2.59 billion pounds of milk each month, and the state leads national production in cheddar cheese, feta, parmesan, and even Limburger. Ada Howey passed away in 1936, having been a pioneer in the Wisconsin dairy industry and in the ideas of gentle treatment of cattle and sanitary farming, and she's remembered for such in the National Dairy Shrine at Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin. Once one of the most famous women in the United States, her legacy lives on in cheese and butter and ice cream, even though her name might not be as well known as Henry Ford or the Wright brothers. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The History Guy, short snippets of forgotten history between 10 and 15 minutes long. And if you did enjoy, please go ahead and click that thumbs up button. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future episodes, please write those in the comment section. I will be happy to personally respond. Be sure to follow The History Guy on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and check out our merchandise on teespring.com. And if you'd like more episodes on forgotten history, all you need to do is subscribe.